During their marriage, Prince Albert made jewelry for his wife, Queen Victoria. He was actually very talented and skillful at it that his jewelries were not only beautiful but testimonials of his love for his queen. The question now is where can these gifts of Albert's love to Victoria be found today? We are taking a dive into the meaningful narratives behind the four tiaras that Prince Albert designed for Queen Victoria. Each of these tiaras has its own story to tell and it is interesting to know what tales lie behind them. Only one of these four tiaras remain in the possession of the British royal family. Do you know which one? Stay tuned in and find out. Victoria's Sapphire Coronet. The Sapphire Coronet is considered one of the great jewels of Queen Victoria's reign and an iconic symbol of the love between her and Prince Albert. The Sapphire Coronet was designed by Prince Albert in 1840 the year Albert married Victoria. Albert commissioned Joseph Kitching to make the tiara. Mounted with diamonds set in silver, the coronet has 11 step cut sapphires set in gold. The sapphires are shaped like an octagon and a calf's head alternately. Albert designed the tiara to accompany a sapphire and diamond brooch that he gave his future wife the day prior to their marriage. The basis of the coronet's design was the Saxon Rautenkranz, the coat of arms of Prince Albert. The gemstones are presumed to have come from jewelry that King William IV and Queen Adelaide had previously given to Victoria. Immortalization of the coronet came through Victoria's early paintings. One painting that showcased the coronet as the symbolic jewel of Victoria's power and status was an 1842 official portrait done by Franz Xavier Winterhalter. After Prince Albert's demise, Queen Victoria wore the coronet instead of the heavy state crown at the Parliament's first opening in 1866. Could the sapphire coronet be the one tiara that remains in the custody of the royal family? Victoria's emerald and diamond tiara. The emerald and diamond tiara was designed by Prince Albert together with matching square emerald necklace with diamond borders, earrings with long emerald drops and brooch with emerald and diamond borders. Again, he commissioned Joseph Kitching to do the jewelries for him. The jewelry lot was eventually presented to Victoria in 1845. The tiara is a typical but rare representation of a tiara of the 19th century made in the style of Gothic revival. It consisted of diamonds that are cushion shaped, emeralds that are step cut, and 19 inverted emeralds that are pear shaped. It was for a number of occasions that Queen Victoria wore the emerald and diamond tiara and its matching jewelries, including an 1855 state visit to France. There are also several portraits by Franz Xavier Winterhalter existing, showing her wearing the tiara between 1846 and 1859. In the 1880s, Victoria's granddaughter, Princess Victoria, Marchioness of Milford Haven, wore the tiara for a costume ball as a loan out. Eventually, in June 1893, Victoria gifted the tiara and its accompanying jewelries to her daughter, Princess Louise. Upon receipt of the jewelry set, Princess Louise wore them on her attendance to the Duke of York and Princess May of Teck's wedding in 1893. Princess Louise is said to have left the tiara to one of her daughters. Either Princess Louise, Princess Alexandra, or Princess Maud, but to which one is not publicly recorded. The jewelry set was last publicly worn by the third Duchess of Fife during the 1960 Parliament State opening. Since the Duchess of Fife was the last to wear the emerald and diamond tiara, could it be in the possession of her heirs? Let's take a breather. Those beautiful tiaras and their corresponding jewelry set are surely sights for sore eyes. Don't forget to leave your comments if any of the tiaras we have just revisited has caught your fancy. It would be nice to know which one has got you intrigued.
Victoria's Strawberry Leaf Tiara. The Strawberry Leaf Tiara was originally designed by Prince Albert as a ruby and diamond bandeau. Albert commissioned it to Joseph Kitching, his favorite jeweler, in 1844. Garrard's in London altered the bandeau in 1848. The bandeau is depicted in an 1855 Franz Xavier Winterhalter portrait of Queen Victoria. In 1860, the tiara underwent another modification with the addition of strawberry leaves, scrolls, and rubies. Victoria was very fond of the tiara, so much so that it was one of the very few colored stones she wore during her mourning for Albert's death. She wore the tiara in 1871 when she attended Princess Louise's marriage to the Marquess of Lorne. Princess Louise was her daughter. Victoria left the tiara and its accompanying jewelry set to Princess Beatrice, her youngest daughter, upon her death in 1901. Beatrice had a row of diamond elements added at the tiara's base. She is seen wearing the tiara in a portrait of her done by Joaquin Sorolla, E. Bastidaya, a Spanish artist. She also wore the tiara during the christening of a number of her grandchildren. The strawberry leaf tiara was loaned out by Princess Beatrice to her daughter, Queen Victoria Eugenie of Spain, in the late 1920s. In 1930, Queen Victoria Eugenie then wore the tiara at a Spanish embassy dinner in London. Princess Beatrice eventually passed on the tiara to the Marquis and Marchioness of Carisbrook, her son and daughter-in-law, sometime in the 1930s. It was during this period that the last alteration to the tiara was done by Cartier in 1933, when the rubies were removed and replaced with diamonds upon request by the Marchioness. The following year, the Marchioness sat for a portrait by artist Philip de Laszlo wearing the tiara. The Marchioness wore the tiara on several occasions, including the 1937 coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth at Westminster Abbey, the 1938 Parliament State opening, and a 1939 Royal Opera House gala performance in Covent Garden. The Marchioness was the last to wear the strawberry leaf tiara. Could her heirs hold the tiara in their possession? Victoria's Oriental Circlet. The Oriental Circlet was one of Queen Victoria's prominent jewels. One of its distinct features are the lotus flowers adorning 17 Mughal arches. It was set in 2,600 diamonds from Garrods in London. Designed in 1853 by Prince Albert, the tiara originally contained opals, which were one of the favorite stones of the prince. Upon receiving the oriental circlet, Queen Victoria commissioned the making of an opal, necklace, brooch and earrings to match the tiara. In 1858, the King of Hanover, Victoria's cousin, successfully claimed certain royal jewels, including some in the oriental circlet. Victoria then had to have a few old jewels broken up and buy some new diamonds to replace those that were taken from the oriental circlet. In 1902, Queen Alexandra, Victoria's daughter-in-law, replaced the opals with rubies, thinking of opals as unlucky jewels. Also, she had the Mughal arches reduced from 17 to 11 and certain tiara parts made removable and replaceable with large single diamonds for a lighter and simpler tiara when appropriate. Despite the changes, the oriental circlet remained unworn until 1937, although Queen Alexandra is said to have worn it during a 1903 German state visit to Denmark. This, however, remained unconfirmed. In May 1937, Queen Elizabeth wore the oriental circlet tiara during the presentation of debutantes at Buckingham Palace. It became a favorite and was worn by Elizabeth for various queenly activities, including state visits, gala, and film appearances, royalty tours, and Parliament state openings. It's time to reveal which of the four Prince Albert tiaras has remained with the royal family. 
the sapphire tiara has found its home at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London in 2017. It can be found inside a cylindrical display cabinet in the center of the William and Judith Bollinger Gallery. Meanwhile, the emerald and diamond tiara jewelry set is on a long-term loan to the Victoria Revealed exhibition at Kensington Palace by the third Duke of Fife estate. Unfortunately, the strawberry leaf tiara disappeared from public view in the late 1930s. Where it is now remains a mystery. There are talks that it might have been sold or broken up sometime between 1939 and 1953, but everything remains to be hearsay. After not wearing the oriental circlet tiara during her widowhood, Queen Victoria, upon her death in 1901, proclaimed the oriental circlet as a crown heirloom to be worn by future queens. Thus, it is the only tiara that remains to be with the royal family to this date. Queen Victoria was really lucky to have a husband knowledgeable in the field of jewelry design. It certainly helped make her public appearances more meaningful, given that she was wearing jewelry sets made by her talented husband. How lucky can a queen get?